This article written shortly before the invasion of Iraq in 2003 says, quote, Today, the Workers' World Party devotes much of its energy to supporting the regimes in Iraq and North Korea. At the demonstration, which many media reports portrayed as a gathering of mainstream Americans, speaker after speaker condemned the United States with ancient communist rhetoric. Revolution, struggle, oppressed people, imperialism, liberation. One speaker even addressed her fellow protesters as comrades. Given the impressive strength of the public address system, it felt like a liberal blast from the past, and if the subject had not been so serious, it might have seemed almost quaint. But the demonstration's organizers, perhaps unwittingly, made a very serious point. More than a decade after the fall of the Soviet Union, and long after most Americans stopped worrying about the Red Menace, a significant part of the movement that has risen up in opposition to war in Iraq is, in essence, a communist front. Perhaps the most visible face of the demonstration was its co-director and chief spokesman, Brian Becker. Becker got a lot of exposure in the days leading up to the rally. He was quoted in newspaper articles, appeared on TV, and did a radio interview to promote the event. The member of a secretariat of the Workers' World Party, and called by some the party's house intellectual, Becker is a contributor to the party's newspaper, Workers' World. There is an almost central casting quality to Becker's communism. For example, in a December 2000 address to the Workers' World Party Conference in New York, Becker began by discussing issues raised by comrades, quote-unquote, who had recently been to Cuba and then launched into a detailed and impassioned analysis of Marxism and revolution. Becker stressed that the Workers' World Party had, quote, supported the Soviet Union against the uh, imperialism and domestic counter-revolution. He praised the Soviets for having sent invaluable aid to Vietnam, Cuba, the African National Congress in South Africa, and other national liberation movements. He railed against U.S. imperialism, and he concluded, we know that the biggest single contribution that we can make to the final transition to socialism everywhere is to build a truly revolutionary party that can lead the struggle to overthrow imperialism at its center. <laughs> 